this is a thing that should help. It helps us. It's part of our life. It's important to us. And, um, you know, so I'm just going to... Woman Ninji, Kato Yaram. So basically I just said welcome to our mountains and our rivers. Um, I invite all my guys. Johnny, all you boys come in. Back to country is important because you deal with um, people that that live on country, that are from country, that know the stories. It's really important that I connect with the right people and get the right messages. Mm. It's important for people to make um, um, connections by talking to each other. Um, kids, um, the departmental staff and the non is staff uh, opportunity to connect with the community. Um, it's really important to have um, somebody listen to you and this gives people an opportunity to, to express themselves and listen to others. This Back to Country has given us an opportunity to learn from the first people here about what cultural healing is for them and uh, how they debrief after a fire. So, um, and how their mobs come together and uh, share stories, take time to, to uh, share their stories about their experience during the bushfire. And I think we've all had a, a real opportunity to learn from that, but we've also been able to share our own stories um, and everyone has a story. And when you can share those stories and have those open conversations, you can find that common ground. And that common ground then for the future, for the next fire, um, will see us progress. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, one thing I, I learned yesterday was, um, you know, that, that sense of home, um, you know, being a connection to the land, uh, you know, coming from, you know, my culture, uh, when, I, when I think of home, I think of properties. And when I think of, um, you know, incident management, it's all about how we can get people back to their properties quicker, how we can protect them, and to start to think more about, you know, home in a broader sense um, and what it means to people, and that we want to bring everyone home, uh, whether that means to their property or, or to their connection to their land. And, um, and I think that's really important and, you know, something that will definitely take away from this. And, and I know it was quite emotional for some people yesterday, um, you know, having to go through that. Um, so I think that was really powerful and um, yeah, definitely I, I think I've got a better appreciation too, um, you know, when we're talking, uh, when we're at Conran and, um, uh, you know, Buzzy was talking about there's no birds and, you know, how important that was in, in, in you know, that connection, um, you know, those things, you know, really bring it home. This is, this is um, sort of where the snowy meets the sea, so it's our door, it's our mother, it's called Karingal. Um, Marlow's on the other side. Um, it's a final traditional campground where we all met and danced and sung and had ceremony. My family's been coming down here and at Conran forever. Um, so we have special connections here. And that was important to me to connect with all these DOP guys that are here to let them know that we actually love and care for the country a little bit deeper than people actually think. It affects us because, you, you know, these little lads here, I'm sitting here watching these little wrens and straight away I can think of a song and a dance. But you go to Connor and there's, you can't. There's nothing there. So it's, it's, um, it's sad. Sad for everyone. Being Aboriginal and a strong gun eye man, I know what it's like to hurt, and some of these white fellas hurt and went through as much pain as we have. So it's important that we acknowledge the fire crews that were couriers that were involved in the in the in the um, fires, and that um, we let them know that we're there for them. You know, as community members, and they're not in their own. No fire is ever going to be the same. You know, the next fire could be worse. 
no one can predict that. So you've got to learn from our past and hopefully have it better for the future. Sometimes I sit here and I think, I'm telling the same stories my mum told and my grandmother told, so it's a long road. Um, and they just got to listen and listen to the people that live on country, actually live here and know country and respect their country and love our country. It's not a hard question, but um, it's a hard process. I probably only met Uncle Buzzy 18 months ago, but we are constantly, like me and the boys, we're constantly in contact with Uncle Buzzy and his son Nick um, and their family and Arnie Ailes, um, who also have ties into our first custodians network. You know, like we've got a really special bond. So, um, and now that that trust's there, they're willing to, to share things with us that they might not necessarily share with others. So, yeah, it's we've, we've come a long way in, in a short period of time. I, I mentioned before that growing up, I never sort of was brought up to learn about our culture. Um, my parents didn't have that education. There is pe people in my family that do, but because we're so, you know, geographically spread apart, it's not as easy to just go see them and learn about things. So. Um, Coming to, to Dalp, you're, you're working on country every day. Um, it's not necessarily my country, my mob's from over west, but um, to come with Uncle Jerry, work, work by his side, um, learn about his, his mob's customs and, and the Gunnar Kurnai customs and traditions. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's made me, I feel like it's made me a better person. I've learned a lot about myself. It's probably discovered a side that I didn't know I, had, I sort of had. Um, and a passion to, you know, I want to look after heritage and culture and, you know, educate one day my kids on the things that I'm learning now. And, and not only that, my sister's little kids, nieces and nephews and stuff. So, you know, um, starting to create that shift in my own family where I'm going to educate those young ones on what I'm learning now. So my husband and I both are involved in operational firefighting and we've got two little kids. So for them, they just saw both of us in and out of the house in our greens, one week on, one week off. It was, they had a different parent. And um, my husband had a pretty intense fire season. He actually was involved in a, in a fatality on the fire line and helping to manage, manage that process. And it, it's been really, painful for us as a family to um, yeah to come to terms with and deal with and as the bush is growing back we're sort of growing back as well um, so so all of the pain that we felt as land managers in seeing the bush go up in flames and our communities impacted that is just by orders of magnitude so much more powerful and strong and painful for Aboriginal people. And the understanding of just the intensity of that and also th that we're the same, you know, that we're connected in that way um, and that we can have empathy for Aboriginal people and their connection because of our connection to place as well. Um, it's just eye-opening and amazing and something that we can take forward for management in the future. You know, we're saying we're not leaving our country. We don't want to leave our country. Yeah. And it was traumatising. We certainly have um, cultural knowledge that we'd like to share and, and contribute to a better, better outcome in future fire management. Having been in the heart of that fire and seen what was happening um, and how everybody band together to save their families and their homes and everything. We're just so grateful that we all survived. So our family have had the utmost respect for everybody that contributed to saving the lives of people in that community. Whether they work for Parks, whether they work for the CMA, whether they work for DELP, whether they were SES, ambulance or police, and family and community, just individuals, all band. We want to move forward and heal and share the knowledge so these disasters don't happen again. Because yeah. they're little, where we were, um, you know, my sister wouldn't be here if it weren't for a Delpy up the road and the parks 
God, you know, and his wife's a parking. And like, we just go, hang on here. In, in the thick of the moment, no one cared whether you were black or white, that fire was going to get it. We, we, if one went down, we all would have went down. And you try to tell our mob, look, you, there are situations where things are not just black and white. For me, the biggest learning is the importance of country to Aboriginal people. And to have Aboriginal people talk about some of their fears during the fires of being separated from country. So maybe being evacuated as part of the fire response and then not being able to get back to country. So you could see that given all of the, you know, some of the really bad things that have occurred over history in terms of being you know, disassociated and removed from country. And people were actually quite fearful of that happening again through the fires. So it really did highlight to me that important connection that Aboriginal people have to the country. And just that understanding of it being home for them. It is the country. You know, we, we think traditionally of homes as being buildings and structures and things. But for Aboriginal people, it's actually the land. It's the country. It's the land itself. There's a lot of healing to be done. So there's a lot of hurt still there. People have been through so much. They can see the country starting to recover, but they can also see the damage that was done to it. So it's just so important that we bring, we create these sorts of opportunities, these sorts of environments where people can come together in a trusted, safe place and share their experiences, share where they're at. What are they fearful about? What's their aspirations? What do they want to achieve? And how do we work together to do that? Because ultimately that's, the best way for us is to do it together. We'll help each other heal, but we'll also help get to where we want to be. One of my realisations has been about fire. So I thought I knew fire pretty well because I've been involved in both bushfire response and planned burning for more than 10 years. And I've seen a lot of different types of fire in that time. But my understanding of fire, its importance, it's, it's use not only as a tool for land management, but also as a tool for cleansing country and healing people. You know, the, um, the smoking ceremony that we did was just this completely different way of using fire that I've never, never really understood fire in that way. But now that my eyes have been opened to that, just seeing how fire brings people together um, how it cleanses people, brings conversation. It's, um, it's really amazing that this event has come out of a big bushfire because it's, it's a cleansing of past relationships and an opportunity for new beginnings. For me, the takeaway will be is we've got so much to learn um, as, a, as a Western society. The, the local Aboriginal communities can teach us so much, not just about land management. And, you know, they, we think about going out in the bush and we talk to these local experts, but they've got a lifetime of experience. Whereas the local Aboriginal community on the land management sense have got generations upon generations upon generations in the same place managing that country. So from that side, we've got a lot to learn, but we've, there's so much we can learn from you know, their connection to their community, their connection to their past, their, hist their, their future. If we don't acknowledge each other, then how can we be a community? <laughs>